All right, so now we're just going to look at motion under gravity. Motion under gravity. We've been looking at motion in a like a normal straight line. So here we're just going to look at motion. What happens when we're moving under gravity, right? Of course, everywhere we're moving under gravity, but here we're talking about special cases of things that are sort of like flying in quotation marks, right? So when an object falls under gravity, it has constant or uniform acceleration. We know that when it's falling under gravity, it is an acceleration which is uniform and by experiment, it was measured to be equal to something like 9.81 meters per second squared. That is the acceleration due to gravity, and it's denoted by g. It's usually denoted by g, right? So, let's say we drop an object from 20 meters. So, this is our object, and we drop it to the ground. <coughs> and imagine that this height, this height is 20 meters. So if that height is 20 meters, um, we know that we released this object. Let's say it was from a tall, tall, tall building. Let's imagine this is our building. This is a window. This is another window. This is 20 meters. And we released this object. What, do we, what, what can we write as our symbols? Let's write our symbols again. S is equal to 20 meters. And then our U. What is our U? Well, it's saying this object was dropped. If an object is dropped, it means initially it was held in someone's hand or something. Since it was being held, it was not moving where it was. So the initial velocity is zero meters per second because it was held and then it was just dropped. So when, when the person um, put out their hand for this thing to drop, when the person dropped this thing, it started with an initial velocity of zero and then started gaining speed after that. Right, so we want to know how long is it going to take for it to hit the ground. Let's look at our equations. V is equal to u t plus uh, plus uh, no 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 no. I'm creating my own equations. Yeah, v is equal to u plus a t. S is equal to u t plus half a t squared, and then we have the other one. V squared is equal to u squared plus two a s. Right. Cool. Now we want to calculate how long it takes for it to hit the ground, right? If we were to use the first equation, we would need to know the final velocity. So be just before it hits the ground, just when it gets to the ground, that is the final velocity. So when it just touches the ground, that is, the, that, that is our final velocity, right? Because that is the time that we want when it just touches the ground. We do not know what speed it's going to hit the ground with. So the final velocity we do not have. So using equation one is going to be difficult because we do not have the V. Let's look at equation two. Equation two, we have our U, we have our, um, we are calculating our T, we have our S, and we have our A. So we can use equation two. Because equation two says S, which is equal to, is equal to UT plus half AT squared. We're not going to use equation three because equation three also depends on the final velocity that we do not know. We can calculate it, but after we get our time, we can calculate our final velocity, right? So our S is 20 meters. And our U, we said our U is zero because this thing was just dropped. It was not thrown because when you throw something, you give it an initial velocity. But here we just dropped. We let it go. So it just fell from zero. So this is going to be zero times T, which is going to be zero plus N. This is going to be half. So this part is going to be zero plus half. And our A, that's one thing that we are now going to get introduced to direction. We're not introduced to, but we are going to emphasize. Um, gravity, acceleration due to gravity is facing downwards. So anything that is going in that direction is in the positive, is in the positive acceleration or the positive G side. Right? It's a positive G side because it's being assi assisted by gravity to gain speed. Anything that is going opposite, or let's say when we throw something in the air, it reduces speed because it is going against gravity, which means it's being re it's going it's undergoing retardation because of the gravitational force, right? 
So which means if we, if we throw it out, upwards, it's moving in a direction that is negative to the direction of gravity. So it has a negative g. The acceleration becomes negative g to show that it is now retardation because it's going to reduce its speed. Otherwise, this thing was just, if we threw it, it was just going to fly off forever and ever. I would have just jumped and gone into space. But then when I jump, I then decrease my speed and stop and then start falling to the ground because I can't keep going up. I'm being retarded by gravity. I'm being decelerated by gravity when I'm going up. But in our case, this thing is dropping and its motion is in the same direction as our gravity force. So which means our A, our acceleration here, is going to be positive. It's going to be a positive G because that is the acceleration working on this object. This object is being worked on gravity. So the acceleration, what type of acceleration it is, is acceleration G to gravity. So this is going to be GT squared. So instead of A, you are going to write G because that's, uh, that is the special type of acceleration acting on it. So therefore my 20 is just going to be half. What is my G? 9.81, or you can put 10. Usually to put 10 makes it easier to just calculate some of these things. T squared. So let's just put 10 here. Rounding it, rounding up the 9.81. So this is going to be 10 squared, right? When you clean it up, you're going to see that 20 is equal to 5t squared. Therefore, 20 divided by 5, you are going to get t is equal to plus or minus 2 seconds. But we cannot get a negative 2 seconds. So therefore, my t is going to be equal to 2 seconds because time just starts at 0, 1, 2, 3. It doesn't start with negatives, right? So it's going to be, um, it's going to be positive 2 seconds. But there is something special about the negative 2 seconds. What does it mean? Why am I even getting negative 2 seconds? I'm just going to tell you what physically that means. Negative 2 seconds. What does this negative 2 seconds mean? If it ever existed. If a time called negative 2 existed. What it basically means is we are considering when, when the object is on the ground, right? But in our case, the object started at the top part. So this negative 2 seconds is saying if there was a time called negative 2, this object would have been on the ground. And then negative 1 would have gone up. Negative, and then on time equal to 0, that's when it's up here. Then time equal to 1, it's going, going down. And time equal to 2, that's when it comes back to the ground or comes back to the same level that you're considering. So here it's just taking time, taking time back to when in quotes it was at the same level. We know it was never at this at the ground, but it's just saying if such a time ever existed, it would have been at negative two, where it was at the same level that you're talking about. I'm talking about the ground level. So it's saying if this thing ever, ever had to go back to go to, to go back in time, it would it would have been at the same level or ground at t equal to minus 2. That's just the physical interpretation of this minus 2, but it doesn't exist really. We just talk about this t equal to positive 2 seconds. So what, it, what this t equal to positive 2 seconds means is when I drop this object, it's going to fall these 20 meters and hit the ground after 2 seconds. That's basically what it means. So that is straightforward, right? I think that is straightforward. And from there, you can calculate your velocity. How fast is it going to hit the ground? You can now use your V is equal to U plus AT. My initial velocity is just going to be zero plus. My A is a special type of gravity, which is just G, which is your 10 and then two. So my, my speed that it's going to hit the ground with is just going to be 20 meters per second. So it's going to hit the ground with R 20 meters per second. That is the speed that is going to hit the ground with. Yeah, makes sense, right? Yeah, uh, to me, I agree with that calculation. So I think it's going to hit the ground at 20 meters per second. Now imagine, imagine we throw a cricket ball. Imagine this is our cricket ball. Imagine we throw it up, upwards. So when you throw it upwards, everything that you throw upwards, <coughs> excuse me, Everything that you throw upwards, oh, it's a tennis ball. Now I'm drawing a tennis ball. But imagine this ball, if I throw it upwards, it's going to go up 
but at some point it's going to come down right it's going to come down what happens is when you throw it up gravity is acting downwards so as gravity is pulling it down it's sort of like dragging it back but this thing wants to go up so it it starts being pulled down and as it is being pulled down by gravity it starts losing speed or it starts undergoing retardation or deceleration just because gravity is acting in the opposite direction gravity is op acting in the opposite direction so this thing starts losing speed losing speed losing speed getting tired getting tired getting tired until it gets to the top and then it just stops yeah yeah it just stops at the top part here because now it cannot go go up anymore it has lost all its speed because gravity was pulling it down when it stops it then starts to fall right it then starts to fall and that retardation like i was explaining acceleration will be equal to minus g when it is going up because it is going against the direction of gravity which is now equal to minus 9.81 meters per second squared right so um so that is a very very important point because imagine that we throw this ball with an initial velocity equal to 30 meters per second i throw this ball up in the air at 30 meters per second we we want to know how long is it going to take to reach this top part here right we can look at our equations of motion v is equal to u plus at that's the one i'm going to use to calculate the time it takes to go to the top part the time taken is going to be v minus u over a. What is the velocity at the top part? It's equal to zero because this thing needs to change direction for it to go down. And it has been retarded, it has been decelerated by gravity. It goes up and then gets tired, gets tired, gets tired. At the top part, it then stops because it has lost all its speed. It has lost all its energy by fighting gravity. When it stops here, it then starts falling. But at the top part where we are considering this point called A, the velocity there is zero because it has stopped. So we are saying, how long does it take for it to get to A where the velocity, the final velocity is zero? Minus the initial velocity, which was 30, divided by acceleration. Since it was going up in the direction that is opposite gravity, my acceleration is going to be negative 10 because my acceleration is negative g. My acceleration is happening in the direction or my motion <coughs> is opposite gravity that's why we put a negative when you punch that in the calculator you get that it takes not negative it takes three seconds for it to get to the top part it's going to take three seconds for it to get to the top part then you can calculate other things like so what is the height the highest height it's going to reach so what is this height here what is this s from where I threw it to the to the highest dis, distance from from where I am, so s is equal to u t plus half a t squared. That is our equation that we know, right? So my s is going to be equal to u. What is my u? My u was thirty times t, which was three, which is what you calculated here, which is three seconds plus half. And again, my a is going to be negative g or negative 10 because the motion in this part of in this section here the motion is opposite gravity so it is negative in this section here when it is falling down when it's falling down the motion is now in line with gravity so my acceleration becomes positive but what we are considering is how high did it uh, how high did it go that's what we're asking how high did it go so my motion there on that left hand side is just uh, is opposite gravity so it's going to be negative 10 times the three seconds it took three seconds squared it took to get there when you punch, punch this in the calculator you see that your answer will be 45 meters so when you throw a ball at 31 at, at 30 meters per second it's going to take three seconds to reach the top part and the top part will be 45 meters um, above you um, above your head or above you that's application of motion under gravity we needed to emphasize this part here this part of negative acceleration that sometimes 
your acceleration will be equal to minus g if you are moving if you are going upwards if you are going up your acceleration will be negative g because you are moving in a direction that is opposite uh, opposite gravity which is facing down if you are going down your acceleration will be equal to positive g because you are now facing the direction of positive gravity of positive gravitational force or positive gravitational acceleration so that's um that's motion under gravity in the next video we are going to introduce um, a new concept so stay tuned for that next one created with free version for non-commercial use